Today on Riff Spirits and Gear, I try to recreate the rhythm guitar tone from Weezer's Blue Album. When I look back on my formative guitar playing years, there are few albums as initially influential to my early guitar playing than Weezer's Blue Album. I was delivering newspapers when Undone the Sweater Song came out and I was immediately floored. It was, it was pop, but it was really hooky. You could sing along to it, but there were these, these crazy overdriven guitars and I instantly had to go and get the album and I was floored with what I heard. There was something for everyone on Weezer's Blue Album. Now for today's video, I'm going to do my best to recreate the rhythm guitar tone from the very first song on that album, my name is Jonas, with a little help from a friend. But before we can get to my attempt, we have to understand what Weezer used in the studio back in August and September of 1993 when they were recording the Blue Album at Electric Lady Studios in New York with producer Rick Ocasek from The Cars. Now Rick brought in a handful of his prized vintage guitars for use on the album as uh, Rivers Cuomo didn't have his Warmoth Strat, his blue, his baby blue Strat that he used live for many, many, many years. Um, this was prior to him acquiring that guitar. So he used Rick Ocasek's guitars in the studio and for the distorted guitar tones relied heavily on a P90 equipped Gibson Les Paul Jr. from uh, the 50s. Um, in conjunction, he plugged straight into his 70s Mesa Boogie Mark I amplifier head, which was a 60 watt version with no graphic EQ. And uh, it was going straight into a Marshall uh, 412 cabinet with the in, inside the 810 enclosure. So it was one of those really tall boys, but there were only four speakers in it, not eight. And that uh, speaker cabinet was equipped with Celestion greenbacks. Now the guitar tone is quite overdriven and fuzzy and very, very crunchy. It was it was pretty anti 90s guitar tone while at the same time kind of defining the 90s guitar tone, but those tones were made with very, very old equipment. So what I will be using is a Mesa Boogie JP2C for a couple of reasons. This is uh, a newer Mesa Boogie amplifier and it is really a modern incarnation of the fabled uh, Mesa Boogie Mark IIc Plus amplifier, as famously heard on Metallica's Master of Puppets, amongst many, many other records. But as far as tones and lineage goes, this will definitely get me in the ballpark, especially when using channel two, which is the 2C Plus mode. Now I will be plugging the Mesa Boogie JP2C into a universal audio aux box uh, guitar cabinet uh, simulator load box and this will allow me to kind of play with microphones and mix and match cabs and kind of come up with the combination that sounds best to my ears and what ended up uh, what I ended up settling on not surprisingly was a 412 Marshall greenback with uh, a Royer 121 ribbon mic and a Shure SM57 that was, uh, that was pretty much it the guitar I am using since I do not have a P90 equipped guitar I'm using one of my custom Music Man Stingray guitars with a, a Duncan distortion in the bridge. This is actually pretty similar to what Rivers has used live for more than 20 years. So I'm gonna give myself a pass on that. So let's get to my attempt playing My Name is Jonas. For the intro, I'm gonna call on my good buddy, Uncle Ben Eller to play the intro because A, he's a huge Weezer fan and B, he plays the intro way better than I can. So you know what? Ain't no fun. If the homies can't have none, my name is Jonas, here we go. All right, so I am in Logic and here is the project. Uh, I'm just gonna start at the top and work my way down. First, we have the bass guitar, which I used Tune Track Easy Bass. 
This got me an approximation, but this is again one of those things, this is one of those pieces of gear that I could never replicate. Uh, Matt Sharp used a very, very early orange amp head that I believe he still uses today. And also no MIDI instrument will ever be able to replicate uh, what Matt Sharp does on the bass. So I didn't even try. However, I think I got the, the basic uh, bass tone down pretty good. Just slightly overdriven. There's just a little bit of, of squash to it. Very, very nice. Next, onto the drums. Um, I am using Get Good, uh, the Periphery 4, the P4 Matt Halpern kit, which is a very versatile, very awesome kit. I'm using the 24 inch kick drum. Very roomy, and I'm using lots of bottom snare on the snare drum. Um, I am approximating what Pat Wilson's kit sounded like and isolated. Sounds like this. Next, we have Ben Eller's guitar intro. I know the intro, the actual intro is an acoustic guitar. I don't wanna give uh, the copyright police any more reason to flag this video than there already is. So I just told Ben to go ahead and just use a super clean electric guitar and I think it sounds fine. And it sounds like this. Uh, I took out a bunch of low end and really the only processing I did was add some tape. But this is the EQ that I did, did to it. And for the rhythm guitars, I did some very, very basic processing, not too different from what they actually would have done back in 1993. I'm gonna turn everything off. I'm gonna let you hear everything in context and then we're gonna isolate it. Now the guitars are too loud right now because I have everything turned off. However, you will see that I didn't do a ton to the guitar tone. It's really right there. First, I'm coming in with the Universal Audio SSL 4000E channel strip. And all I'm doing really with this is uh, I'm using the filters to trim out some of the low and high end. Uh, very, very, very basic processing. I'm turning up the low mids a tiny, tiny amount, but otherwise I didn't touch anything. I'm just kissing it. I'm really not doing a ton. Next, the Oxide Tape, also from Universal Audio, uh, I'm coming in I'm lowering the input because I don't want to distort the tape machine. I want to use it for its tapey goodness. However, I, I don't want to overdrive it. So here's, I'm going to turn it on. I'm actually going to just bypass it. And then I'm going to turn it on in the middle of it. And then finally, I'm coming in with the Universal Audio Pultec EQP1A for EQing, final EQing. I'm adding a little bit of top, uh, top end and I'm attenuating the bottom end just a little bit. I'm gonna actually turn this on and use the bypass switch and you'll hear this doing a little bit of work. No compression. And finally, on the main bus, I'm using Kazrog True Iron to add some, 
some irony goodness, some saturation. And then I'm coming in throughout the whole mix and I am at a 50% uh, mix of this API 2500 bus compressor. Um, I chose the API because I know that's what they have at Electric Ladyland. Uh, I am just using this as a general compressor for the two bus. That is all the processing I used on this. I think I ballparked it definitely. There is still some low mid thing that happens when you plug in uh, the P90 with an old uh, Mesa Mark One, which was just called the Mark at the time. Um, I'm not able to fully replicate it, but I definitely think I, I captured the spirit of the Blue Album. This was a ton of fun, and uh, yeah. If you guys have any other ideas for uh, guitar tone recreations, please leave them down below in the comment section. And with that, a uh, big shout out and big love to my friend Ben Eller for playing on this track, and yeah. You guys have been wonderful. I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, please consider subscribing. It helps me help you and then in turn you get more stuff to watch. And also I have all sorts of stuff down in the description of this video. Sweetwater giveaway stuff. There's all sorts of links to all sorts of things. So consider uh, checking that out as well if you're gonna hang. But if you don't hang, all good. I still love you.